course, but this in follow-up, our next guest, we're very happy to welcome back a representative from Tree Canada. We know that our friends, our fellow Albertans, those of you tuning in from Fort McMurray don't need us to tell you that the rebuild is well underway. Homes, businesses, and then, of course, the reforestation as well. It's a huge project. It's going to take a ton of cash. But there's been big funding announcements as well for Operation Relief. Paul Jorgensen is the Manager of Communications and Marketing for Tree Canada, joining me on the phone from Ottawa. Hi, Paul. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? Doing very well, thanks. Am I safe to assume you're not doing a ton of planting uh, in the midst of a big snowstorm at the beginning of March? It's a wee bit cold to put some trees in the ground uh, just yet. Yeah, that's right. Um, So right now you're just mobilizing? Yeah, we're actually going to be up in Fort Mac um, next week. Uh, we're sending a couple of our team members up there to meet with the community. We're very keen on working closely with the community, uh, not just the mayor's office, but actually, you know, the people who live there. We want to make sure that they've got plenty of opportunities to uh, get full buy-in, full feedback, meet with us, you know, um, share their feedback and get to know kind of the work that we're doing on the ground. Paul, just get, for those that, that won't have heard or won't remember the last time that we checked in with you and your group, it was a number of months ago. Can you give us a general idea of exactly what Operation Relief looks like? Is it mostly boreal reforestation? Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to give you a quick uh, rundown there. So Tree Canada, we're a national environmental uh, charity, a tree planting charity. Uh, we got this money entirely from you know Canadians, uh, corporate sponsors. This is just an outpouring of support from coast to coast to coast of people in every province, companies in every province, um, who felt it's our turn to help Fort Mac. It's, it's our opportunity to make a difference. And we raised uh, about $1.3 million dollars to help uh, restore Fort Mac. And we're going to be working with uh, local tree nurseries in the the Fort Mac area to make sure that we're planting area-specific, area-appropriate trees. So these are trees that have a high likelihood of survivability, that uh, we're going to be planting them in a way that meets um, fire smart standards. So these are kind of the new best practices in terms of mitigating uh, the risks of future forest fires. And we're doing this with, uh, you know, tree planting experts on the ground in Fort Mac. Uh, So start to finish, this is going to be kind of a, a really well-coordinated uh, uh, push to, and Paul, to this make is, sure these people get better. This would be in areas like outlying areas of Fort McMurray, but also, I mean, you're, you'll be planting right in neighborhoods on boulevards and stuff too, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is the urban tree canopy as well as the areas around it. So uh, starting this spring, we're going to be rolling out Operation Relief in the communities of Sapray Creek, Thickwood, and Métis Local 1935. And then the hope is that next year we'll roll out to Beacon Hill, which, as you know, is one of the hardest hit mm-hmm. communities uh, from the blaze last year. What are do you, do you have specifics on which trees you're using? I'm just curious. Um, we're working with the nursery right now. I don't have any specific trees on the, the specific species in front of me, hmm. uh, but I do know that we're uh, making sure that they're all locally sourced trees because we don't want to introduce any um, potentially invasive species or species that aren't naturally from that area. Of course. Really so you, important for us. So you see a, about a, a $1.3 million donation. How I mean, how, how much is that in, in the grand scheme? Does that just about cover it? Or are you halfway there? What do you figure the cost will look like? We don't have uh, an upward target of what we want to reach. 1.3 million is going to make a huge difference in the lives of uh, Fort McMurray residents. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of trees planted. This will be one of the largest single tree planting un- uh, undertakings that we've ever taken in our 25-year history. Uh, but we want more. You know, there's there's more work that can be done. The people of Fort Mac, uh, you know, need more help in my estimation. So, uh, you know, we're still encouraging Canadians and corporate sponsors to, to join up. This is entirely a, like a non-profit uh, uh, push. It's uh, just simply people need help and we're able to help and, and uh, we have the expertise to, to do that. So people can check out treecanada.ca to learn more about Operation Relief, uh, Fort McMurray. Paul, it's interesting the impact that... that trees have isn't it the vegetation i mean we we all understand the you know what what trees give to the environment and and the the science behind it but it's also a psychological boost isn't it to get some greenery back in some of these areas that were scorched so badly 
Absolutely, yeah. There's all kinds of great research out uh, nowadays about, you know, nature deficit disorder. I mean, we hear about attention deficit disorder, but there really is this kind of increasing awareness that, like you said, you know, green space, uh, you know, uh, trees, they really do impact in terms of not just, you know, in terms of the air quality, you know, uh, fixing nitrogen, uh, sequestering carbon, you know, all these great things, creating microclimates, but they have meaningful, measurable, serious uh, benefits for people, for the communities, for you know the 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 livability of communities. It's really kind of a win win win. Huh, Paul? Before I let you go, uh, a science question here from a listener, and, and it's a great question. They're wondering, does you know, does the do these reforestation or these replanting efforts really need to happen? Listener says, I thought that forest fires refertilized the soil. Yeah, uh, forest fires can be beneficial, absolutely. Um, what we're focusing on a lot is the, the urban treescape as well, and a lot of these trees do need a bit of help to get there. I mean, if you, people kind of need to keep in mind that when you have a forest fire, there's an extended period of time where, you know, it takes a while for nature to bounce back. So we're trying to give a bit of help, but also a lot of these urban trees, you know, we're planting, uh, when we get into these urban tree canopy bits, we're, get, we're talking about larger caliper trees so that these people can have urban treescapes sooner as opposed to, you know, in 25 or, you know, 30 sure. years, they get it right away. Right. Marfus is wondering if the tree planting will begin after mushroom picking is done. He says companies set up for this after major forest fires like the one we saw in Slave Lake. Yeah, so the tree, pl- the tree planting right now we're uh, looking to roll out starting in spring and we're going to be working with expert foresters in Fort Mac. So they're working with the communities and like I said, we're going to be actually flying up there to the communities um, to the community next week to meet with everybody, make sure that we're not going to be disrupting anything. The absolute last thing we want to do is uh, is disrupt anything. We only want to be a, a help to uh, to the people in Fort Mac. Paul, I was intrigued by what you said, uh, employing best practices when it comes to, to sort of fire suppressing the theory in where and how you're planting the trees. What would be an example of what you're referencing? Yeah, so fire smart standards, they're actually, it's, 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 kind of a very complex uh, kind of set of standards, but just very briefly, it's about choosing the kinds of trees that you plant. So, you know, certain trees are less conducive. So they're, they're, they're a little bit more resistant to these kinds of um, uh, forest fire blazes that can break out. It's also in terms of uh, the distance between the planting, so making sure that you're not just kind of clustering them uh, all in one in one go, you know, making sure that you have a nice variety, uh, doing uh, some work with the underbrush. There's a, there's a whole series of kind of uh, uh, industry best practices, and we're going to be following these. All right. Really interesting stuff. Very important work that you're doing, uh, Paul. Thanks, I, I suppose, to your entire team, and, and thanks for making time to speak with us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on the call. Of course. That's Paul Jorgensen uh, giving us a shout from Ottawa, Ontario. He's... Uh, you know, on the team uh, Tree Canada, you can read more at treecanada.ca. Check out their website; it's pretty cool. They have some informative videos and stuff like that, and you can learn more specifically about what they're doing in Fort McMurray. We all.